You know, sometimes life can get so hard for us and we seem to forget that God is in control over everything over our lives. Even when it seems like the devil is coming in to just steal everything from us, we got to always remember that the victory belongs to Jesus. He reigns over everything. The devil has no control unless we give it to him. So let's always remember that the victory belongs to Jesus. As we sing this song, just lift your hand and just meditate and just think over your life how God has just brought you out of things. I know everybody in this room has been through something. I know I have. So just stretch your hands out to the Lord. stand against the Lord no one can no one will and who can stand against the King no one can no one will oh
And the only reason why I can really minister this song, a lot of y'all really don't know that we just found out last week that my mom has breast cancer. So, when Myra's asked me to sing a song, I'm trying to get better with ministering. And I feel like God is just taking me through a lot of stuff because that's the only way that I can minister to the people. You can't minister if you ain't never been through nothing. So when I see the victory belongs to Jesus, I really believe it. The victory belongs to Jesus. He reigns over cancer. He reigns over heartache. He reigns over brokenness. He reigns over financial situation. You just got to believe that the victory belongs.
Jasmine, you just keep ministering that song to yourself because unlike me, I can pray, but God gave you a gift to sing. Amen. And he acknowledges when you praise and worship him. Whatever song that comes on you, you can minister that song because you, you received it. Because you know no matter what the doctors say, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what mom goes through, God still has the final say. The victory belongs to Jesus. His word is final. No matter what, it's final. Amen. And you said put your trust. That's what you continue to do. Even when you don't, it don't look like you trust in God. Keep saying, I trust you, God. I trust you, God. Even when it don't, when, it, when she get a bad diagnosis, when she's throwing up, when it's not right, I trust you, God. I trust you that you have the victory over this situation. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all, healing is in the house of the Lord. Healing is in the house. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to get this. Hold on. We have had several people to come to Hope Everlasting. We have walking miracles in the house this morning. So to me, Kelsey is not a giant. It's not a giant that I face. My God is bigger than any giant that I face. We have believers in the house that can minister right where she is, that knows. No matter how the chemo makes you feel, no matter what the doctor say your white blood cells look like, no matter how much you puke over the toilet, the victory still belongs to God. Because we have healing. We have people that have obeyed and trusted God in this house. Amen. Come on, y'all. We got the blood that's around our sister and let her know she got victory over cancer. That's not a giant in her life. She God, you got victory over suicide, God. No children will be defeated. No adult will be defeated. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare in this house today that we will have a continuing healing, a continuing flow of your healing power and your grace and mercy in this house. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, God. Ah, yes, God. Glory to the Lord. We trust you, God. We trust you, God. We trust you, God. We trust you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, Jesus. I'm at a place where I'm tired of hearing the defeat in the face of God's life about the circumstances of the world. Jesus. Because God came and died and shed the blood for any and everything that we come about in our life. All God asks us to do is live our life and obey God and live the lifestyle that is pleasing unto Him. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. All we got to do is let our life glorify God. We have, we have conquered any and every situation that comes in our life. Jesus. Cancer. Jesus. Every time I hear it, I laugh because I know my God is good. Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. God, you got victory. Yes, God, you got victory. You got victory. You got victory, you got victory God. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to me. 
victory belongs to God. Anything we face, the victory still belongs to God. Amen. Minister that to yourself in your situation. Whatever, if your kids are acting up, if your husband acting up, if your finances not me, still say the victory belongs to God. If your health is not right, the victory belongs to God. Victory belongs to God. Give God what he's due. Give him the honor and the acknowledgement that he's due. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Not in the God I serve. You will not be disappointed. My God don't disappoint. Amen. Hallelujah. Be encouraged today, thanks to God. Be encouraged. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Well, welcome everyone. Welcome to the hymn. We are Hope Everlasting Ministry. Well, the hope of the Lord is in his hymn. Do we have any first-time visitors in the house today? Come on, stand to your feet. We have a, a song just for you. We thank you for coming to visit with us, and you are truly welcome in the house of the Lord. Tuesday night prayer call is 7 to 7.15. Wednesday, this Wednesday, will be a one-night revival. It will start at 7, and we sometimes, you guys, the things we're going, we need a renewed and revival. And I'm coming to expectation on Wednesday that God is going to do just that. We have an awesome man of God, Pastor Earl Dixon, and he will be bringing the word. Amen. Third Sunday is corporate prayer from 8 to 8.45. Marriage Matters is June. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. It starts at 8.45 until 9. I, my apologies. 9.30. Amen. I'm going to check with the pastor next time when he see if he got an announcement. <laughs> Marriage Matters is June the 30th at 6.30. Leadership Deep Dive is June the 24th from 10 to 12.00. Virtue, we will meet July the 1st at 9 a.m. We have an awesome woman of God that called me and said, hey, can I teach? And I was like, what? So, Miss LaShawn, she will be bringing the words for Virtue on July the 1st at 9. Come on out and support. Prime Timers will meet June the 10th at 10 a.m., amen? And we also have a wedding. The Browns will be renewing their vows at 4 o'clock at the church on that same day on the 10th. ACT prep, the next days are coming soon. We had a great turnout for this time. Um, I have a few people that kind of called me after the date, a few of my friends, and I was like, we got another one coming. When I find the date out, we get it out. Outreach, we still need your help bringing school supplies so we can bless the kids of God. We need backpacks, we need composition, we need pencils, mechanical pencils, uh, loose leaf paper, whatever you can be a blessing, please bring, amen. Summer enrichment uh, will be postponed uh, for right now. The dates, will, the new dates will be coming. July the 19th, 20th, and 21st will be Vacation Bible School, 7 p.m. nightly. Ending with our trips to Six Flags. Um, and that will be more information to come as to when to start payment on that. Pastor would like to meet with all our leadership team members, the team leaders, uh, for each lead, each uh, ministry you are over immediately after church. I have no kids nuggets because I guess all the kids are out of school. Amen. Um, I do have a, oh, I'm sorry. My baby Abigail, you guys, she was shooting for symphonic band. She did make symphonic band second chair. Woo -woo. Amen. I'm very proud of her. Um, and she made show choir. So I'm, I'm excited for her again. Uh, okay, we have a card from... Um, 
the Pollard family say a special thank you. Everyone's kindness has a part in bringing joy to someone's heart. It says sometimes it's easy to forget that there are nice people out there doing nice things for others. Thank you for being such special reminders, the Pollard family, on the uh, loss of his grandmother. And they buried, they, uh, buried her yesterday. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me take a little privilege. Today we celebrate 23 years of marriage. I want to say happy anniversary. to uh, to have uh, two wonderful children, Alexis and Abigail. The Lord has truly blessed us in a, in a, in a magnificent way. I, I, I would tell the story in my way, but I'll tell the true story since I'm standing in the pulpit. She spoke, she spoke one day and that was it. I called her and we've been together ever since. So she reached out the door and she spoke to me. And when she spoke to me, I picked up the phone and called and that was in January of 1993, and we've been together ever since. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend. So we're grateful for 23 years of marriage, grateful to be working in ministry together, leading a, a great group, a great group of people here at Hope Everlasting Ministry. The Lord has truly blessed us. Amen. So we're, we're grateful for all that the Lord is doing. How many of you are just glad to be in the house of the Lord today? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm tempted. I'm tempted to believe that, but I'll ask you one more time. How many are really glad to be in the house of the Lord today? <laughs> Come on, somebody, somebody, just take a minute and give Jesus praise. Let's just take a minute and stop right where we are and give Jesus praise. It's one thing to give man praise, but it's a whole different thing to give Jesus praise because He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the praise. He truly deserves all the glory. So we're grateful once again to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Well, it is indeed giving time and we're grateful. We're grateful to have the opportunity to give. Of course, you guys know we're still in our 90 day tithing challenge. My goal for each believer is that tithing won't just be a challenge for you, but it will be a lifestyle. It will be a lifestyle that you know that God is able to do with your giving what you can't do with it. Amen. So in our 90-day tithing challenge, I pray that everybody has gotten this off the table. You have it on your refrigerator at home, and you're believing what God says with regard to your giving. There's many ways to give here at Hope Everlasting Ministry. Of course, we have text to give. You can give through text to give. We're, we're grateful to have people that do text to give. You can also give at thehymnchurch.org. We have people that give that way. But it's nothing like being able to give in person, amen? It's nothing like being able to give in person. Oftentimes, I think about giving in person. I think about what happened when that lady that had those two mites, that was all she showed up at church with, and it said that Jesus was standing by the money, by, by, the, uh, by, the, by the money baskets. And when she placed her offering in that money basket, uh, it got God's attention to the point where he stopped the possession of the giving and, and just acknowledge this woman for her faith and her giving. So I ask that we make sure that we have faith in our giving and all that we do. And of course, we always talk about our standard here at Hope Everlasting Ministry. The standard here at Hope Everlasting Ministry, it is indeed the cross. It's not that we try to do everything perfect, but we do know that because of who God is, we can be excellent in all things, amen? How many of you believe that today? <clears throat> I don't believe you believe that. Amen. So it's time for our, it's time for our tithing offering. Come on, stand to your feet. It's time for that tither's confession. It's time for the tither's confession. You can get that envelope in your hand. I want you to lift that envelope in the air. And let's, let's believe God that, you know, somebody may be here today and you may be saying, I'm not a tither. I want to be a tither. Well, this is that prophetic utterance that you're going to do today. And we're believing God that tithing will become a lifestyle for you. Amen. Come on, repeat after me. Our tither's confession says, I am a tither. I tithe because I trust the word of the Lord that says, if I bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, there will be food in the house. Lord, your word says that you will open the windows of heaven 
and pour out for me a blessing until it overflows. You said that you will rebuke the devourer for me so that the devourer does not destroy the fruit of my ground. Lord, I believe that because I'm a tither, all nations, all nations will call me blessed and I will be a delightful land. Givers, you have the same right in your confession. Lord, I am grateful that you have given me the heart to be a giver. Lord, I am a cheerful giver of my time, my talent, and my finances. I believe what you said in your word. Give, and it will be given to me. They will pour into my lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by the measure that I give, it will be measured back to me. How many of you believe that today? All right, here's the opportunity. Listen, tithing is the only place that you can put God to test, put him to the test in his word, through his word, amen? So we're going to ask our middle section to stand. We're going to ask our deacons to come this morning. Listen, come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet on those outside aisles. We're going to, we're going to escort you to the inside. Why don't you give up, come and give unto the Lord today like you believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do through your tithe and through your offering. Come on, let's trust the Lord today. Come on and get that, get that Bible in your hands. Come on, stand to your feet. It's time for the Hope Everlasting Ministry mission statement as well as our hymn faith confession. Come on, let's get that Bible in your hands. Let's get that Bible in your hands. Repeat after me. We'll start with our mission. Our mission at Hope Everlasting Ministry is to encourage people through the Word of God to live out the plan, the purpose, and the will of God for their lives. Come on, let's get that Bible in there. It's time to repeat that hymn, Faith Confession. Come on, let's say it like you believe it. In my hand, I hold my Bible. It is the unchanging Word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I can have. By faith, I believe what my Bible says concerning my life, my health, and my wealth. My house is blessed. I find great delight in his commands. My children will be mighty in the land. I am the generation of the upright. I will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in my house. And the righteousness of God endures forever. I trust God. I trust God for the plans and purpose he has for my life. And Lord, today, this moment, I am thankful for your love concerning me. If you believe the confession, come on, give God a hand clap of praise for that today.
every resource is gone. Yeah. When nobody has good news to tell you. When it doesn't seem like you have a friend in the world. When it seems like all hope is gone. You got to learn to stand on it. You got to learn to stand on the solid rock. God is when, when it seems like you're all by yourself. But you do know being saved can be a lonely place. Loving the Lord for real can be a lonely place. Amen. When it doesn't seem like you have a friend, if you if you need a friend, he'll 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 be your friend. He'll he'll be your friend. He'll be your friend. He'll be your friend. Talk to somebody who's lost a mother and ask them, will he be a mother for you? Talk, just talk to, some, talk, to, talk, to, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody who's lost a mother and they'll tell you he'll be a mother for you. Why don't you take a minute and talk to somebody who's lost a father? He'll, they'll be able to tell you that he'll be a, he'll be a father for you. Yeah. Why don't you just take a minute and talk to somebody that that he's healed from a terminal disease and they'll tell you that they'll tell you that he'll be a healer for you why don't you talk to somebody talk to somebody who's looked for a job when it didn't seem like there were no jobs and had more month than they had money why don't you talk to somebody like that and they'll tell you that he'll send an employer your way when you didn't seem you were employable See, you got to learn to talk to God. You got to learn to, you got to learn to put your trust in God. Yes. You got to learn to, yes, see, you got, you got to learn to love God even when it don't seem like nothing is working out for you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you, you just got to, you got to learn to put your trust in it, folks. I'm telling you, because when man lets you down, God will never let you down. You got to, you got to learn to love him in spite of, amen. You got to. Because you, you do know that he did love us in spite of us. <laughs> he loved us in spite of us. So, yeah. Oh, is that how excellent? Yeah. So much. Yes. into the hearts and the minds of your people today. Lord, I hide behind that cross at Calvary so that people can only see you and hear you. We thank you for today, God. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Lord is indeed worthy to be praised. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for standards of worship. Come on, let's bless the Lord for our worship team. Let's bless the Lord for our musicians. Let's continue to pray for our, our Hymn Faith family members who are out on vacation, those who uh, 
uh, are getting over ailments right now, let's pray for them. Let's be mindful to, to always pray for each other. I sent you guys a little message this week, and I want you to start focusing on going beyond being members and focus on being laborers because that's exactly what we are. We're laborers for the Lord. Most folks forget that they're so concerned about the role that they're on here on earth and forget that our names are written in heaven. So this is about being laborers for the Lord. Amen. I want to thank our, our greeters on today. Looking sharp back there on the door. Always willing to step in and do whatever it takes for our services to flow. And we're grateful for that. We're th grateful for our sound people, thankful for our camera people. And uh, just, just, just overall grateful for all that the Lord is doing. Amen. It's, it's tough on a weekly basis to stand before thousands of people to share God's word because you always want to make sure that you never let God down and never let his people down. Amen. So we're grateful for always having this opportunity. Uh, again, thanks for uh, all the, the many messages and notes about our anniversary. I'm, I'm a, I like to see myself as a, I'm a, man, my plate gets pretty full pretty quick. I'm a, I'm a, a father, a husband, uh, a son, try to be a friend when I can. I'm somebody's employee. Uh, so it's, it, it, it's, it's a lot. And I always try to make sure that I honor my wife and honor my children uh, the best way I can. And the most important thing is honoring the Lord while honoring them. So we're grateful once again for, for just the opportunity to serve and to love the Lord. Amen. Quick reminder, please, please, Wednesday night, don't let, don't let Kingdom Ministries have more people in this building than we do. Amen. The revival starts at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. The altar will be open at 6. We'll be praying. The altar will be open. We're praying for a revival. If we look at our nation today, uh, we're, we're in trouble. Our nation, our nation, our nation is in trouble. We, I, I thought about it this morning. God can't be pleased with Sunday morning. He can't be pleased with Sunday morning. Sunday morning is still the most segregated day of the week. We can work together, we can go to school together, but we can't go to church together. It's still the most segregated day of the week, and it's still a day that God is not pleased with. So we got to be we got to be more mindful to to love the way God has called us to love here in this nation. And uh, if we don't do that, man, our children are going to be in trouble. Our children are going to school saying stuff to other children that they absolutely have no business saying because they're watching hate in their own homes with regard to what's coming through the TV from people that are supposed to not display that kind of behavior. So I'm, I'm just telling you guys, we have, a, we have a huge, huge responsibility as the body of Christ. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's get in this word a little bit more today. We're in the book of Habakkuk, as I said to you guys on last week when we do a, a study of that word, it's actually pronounced Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Habakkuk. We're in the second chapter of the book of Habakkuk. We're in the second chapter of that book, Habakkuk. And we're really hovering around those first three verses, amen? And it reads... I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the ramparts and I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me and how I may reply when I am reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, record the vision and inscribe it on tablets that the one who reads it may run, for the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal, and it will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. It will not delay. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. We're grateful once again to be able to share uh, in this, as we started off, I didn't, I didn't plan on this being a series. I thought we would just kind of have one sermon on last week and just kind of move on, but we ended up spending a lot of time focusing on the visionary on last week, the visionary. And the subject of this, uh, of this what we call a series, is called Valuing the Vision. Valuing the Vision. We have to we have to value, we have to value the vision that's given to the body of Christ by God. And as we began to talk on last week, I gave you a quick introduction as to who Habakkuk is. Habakkuk is the, is the eighth of what we call 12 minor prophets. He's the eighth of the 12 minor prophets. He's He's not a minor prophet because he doesn't have a certain status in the eyes of God. He's he's called a minor prophet simply because of the volume of the book in which he wrote. It was just a three-chapter, three-chapter book, but it was because of the volume of the book. Of course, you know, Isaiah is a lot longer, Jeremiah is a lot longer, Daniel is a lot longer, but then we fall into those minor prophets, people like Obadiah, Nahum, and, and Habakkuk falls in that group of people, though that group of prophets that are called minor prophets. There are 12 minor prophets, five major prophets uh, that we see in, in, uh, in the Word of God. And, and one of the things, a couple of things we brought out about Habakkuk on last week that really blessed me as we begin to look at this even more. The first thing, one of the first things we brought out about him is that he was a friend of Jeremiah. They they, they were good friends, but the thing that was most important to me that we brought out about Habakkuk, he was a man that was vigorous in his faith. He was deeply rooted in the religious traditions of Israel, and because he was so deeply rooted in the traditions of Israel, it grieved him, it grieved him to see uh, the tribe of Judah go through what they were going through at the hands of of the Chaldeans. We talked about it last week, a couple of indications of what was going on with regard to Habakkuk. He, he began to ask God in, in, in the first chapter, in the first chapter of the book of Habakkuk, he said, how long, starting at verse two, in that first chapter, he said, how long, O Lord, will I, will I call for help and you will not hear. How, how long will I call and you won't hear? He said, I cry out to you violence, yet you do not save. Why do you make me see iniquity and cause me to look on wickedness? Yes, destruction and violence are before me. Strife exists and contention arises. Therefore, the law is ignored and justice is never upheld. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, justice comes out perverted. So, If you look at Habakkuk and what he's saying, he says, how long do I have to sit here and watch your people go through what they're having to go through at the hands of the Chaldeans simply because they're making the choice to be disobedient people? How long do I have to watch this? And and so what happens is, as Habakkuk begins to talk to God about this, he, he, he's seeking God about this. And the thing we talked about last week, we spent a lot of time talking about the visionary. When we start looking at the value of the vision, we, we talked a lot about the visionary on last week. We said that the visionary has to be one that's willing to stand. He said, I will stand on my guard post at, and station myself on the rampart. So he was having to be the one who is willing to stand. Then we talked about the visionary has to be one willing to do what nobody else is willing to do. He he stands on the rampart. He stands in a dangerous place because the rampart was the guard that was around the land where the children of Judah were. So he stationed himself and put himself where nobody else was willing to put himself. So the, 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 the visionary has to be willing to do what nobody else is willing to do. And then we talked about the, the visionary must be willing to be corrected. He says, I will stand, I will watch, and I will see when I am reproved. 
for all the complaints that I've had against your people, God, I'm willing to stand here and wait until I am reproved. So that's from the standpoint of the visionary. So as we move into this, uh, this, this part that we want to talk about today, there are three particular parts we want to talk about today. We want to talk about the writer or the recorder of the vision. We want to talk about the, the writer or the recorder of the vision. We want to talk about the reader, the reader of the vision. And then we want to talk about the runner with the vision. The reader of the, the, the writer of the vision, the readers of the vision, and the runner with the vision. So if you notice what's happening, after he is willing to wait, after he is willing to watch and see, even in the presence of potential danger, he is willing to watch and see what the Lord says. No matter what it takes, the visionary, he, he, he's willing to wait. It doesn't matter. I just want to hear what the Lord says with regard to the Lord's people. Because you notice what's happening here. The recorder can only record or write what God is saying. It's, it's not about what the visionary wants. It comes down to what God wants. And if it was about what the visionary wanted. He doesn't have to wait to hear from God. He can just start writing what he wants to write and not wait on God to speak what God needs to speak. If you notice what the text says, he says, Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on tablets that the one who reads it may run. So, so the recorder of the vision has a great responsibility. The recorder of the vision, notice, and I want you to look at this from the standpoint of the New Living Translation. It says, then the Lord said to me, write my answer plainly on tablets. So the one who's writing the vision or recording the vision has a responsibility not to try to use big words and all this kind of stuff that nobody can really understand but them. I've said this to you on many occasions. I can come in here sharing words with you from the Hebrew and from the Greek, but at the end of the day, Pastor, I need you to teach me how to live. Tell me how to live now. I don't want to know what a word means in the Hebrew. I don't want to know what a word means in the Greek. I don't need to know how many definitions you know. I don't need to know how well you speak or how eloquent you speak. All I need to know is what's plain and right in front of me so that when you write it, people can read it. Because what ends up happening is the moment we get a little bit of education, we want to take time to prove how smart we are. I've told you on many different occasions when you're the smartest person in the room, it's time to leave the room. See, most of us, all we want to do is try to use stuff to prove how smart we are as opposed to people getting what they need to get from God. The vision that is being written is not the visionary's vision, but it is the Lord's vision that is given to the visionary. If you find yourself in a situation where all that person is talking about is what their desire is, as opposed to saying what the Lord said, you're in the wrong place. Because you notice what he said. He said, I'm sitting here to see what the Lord says. Not what I have to say, but what the Lord says. If the vision is not tied to the word of God, then the vision is man's doing and not God's. If it's all about what man wants, then guess what? Man sets himself up to get the glory. And it's not about that. Notice what the Bible says in Proverbs 29, 18. He says, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. Okay, okay, so, so King James Version says, where there is no vision, the people perish. What the word vision right there means in the context of that verse of Scripture, 
It is saying where there is no word, the people will run wild. Where there is no word, there are no people. Uh, the, the people are now unrestrained. Where there is no word, there is no fruit of the word that comes forth out of the lives of the people of God. Where there is no word, people are now, they have no self-control because they're not controlled by the word. They're controlled by what they want to do because there is no word in them. Can we talk about Mephibosheth down in Lodabar? He was in a place where there was no word or no, or no pasture. In other words, he was in a place where no vision could come forth because he was getting no word. See, the vision has to be tied to God's word. So the recorder of the vision, if the vision cannot tie back to what God's word says, then the vision is that man's vision and is not from God. They, so, so what happens is man is just doing what he wants to do because he wants to do it. Watch this, because he can. And that's out of order. That's, that's not according to God's word. So, so, so we got to understand that the vision, when you, when you write the vision, he says, make it plain. The vision doesn't need to be complicated because if the vision is complicated, it causes division. And when it causes division, the word of God, what, what God plans and attend, intends to happen cannot go forth at the plan that he has for it to go forth because there's now division. But notice what's happening. The writing of the vision is tied to the visionary because the visionary is the one that paid the cost to sit there to hear from God. When everybody else was doing what they were doing, the visionary was the one sitting there waiting to hear what God is saying. So when, when the visionary hears what God is saying and he writes the vision and makes it plain, he clearly understands that it is not me who's talking, but it's God who's talking so God's people can get the vision clearly. Uh, but, but then what happens is, this, this, this is what happens. Well, Pastor, here's, here's my vision for Hope Everlasting Ministry. It's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible for there to be more than one visionary for a vision. And, and I get, hold on, let, 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 me, let, me, let me help you. I, I get what people say, Hicks. I'm going to talk to Hicks because Hicks, Hicks ain't going to get offended with me. I know Green won't either. Lockett won't either. Mullen won't either. They ain't going to get offended with me, but I'm going to talk to Hicks in particular. Is that okay? That's fine. It would be out of order for Hicks to come to me and say, well, Pastor, my vision for this is, your vision for this is the vision is what we plug into. The vision is what's already here, and we plug, it, it, when we read the vision and we look at it, we plug what God has given here into what God, has, what God is doing. If we, watch this. If you want to see something take off and work, plug your thought or your idea into what's already here. But then what happens is the moment, the moment you say, well, how does that apply to what we're already doing here or what the plan is moving forward with what God has given us to do. How does that apply to what God has given us? How, how does it apply? And then what ends up happening is offended people will cause division too. Let me, I'm just, let me, let me, let me keep going. There are, there is the writer of the vision. There, there's the writer, there's the writer of the vision. Then there are the readers the readers of the vision, the readers of the vision, the, the, the readers of the vision, there, there, are, there, there, there are people that can read it clear, know what it says, but did, still don't do what it says. So, so what that says is, if it, he said, those that read it, 
they can run. In other words, it should be so clear as to what the expectation is, I can run while I'm reading it. I can literally be walking with the vision, read it, and never trip up. Because I have a clear understanding because it's written so plainly that when I read it, I can expect what the vision says to happen. So, so you, you got to see that, that you got the writer, you got the writer and the reader. Watch this. If the reader doesn't understand, all the reader has to do is talk to the writer. But what ends up happening is when the reader doesn't understand, the reader will talk to everybody else other than the writer. And the, the, if, you, if, if, if the person you talk to didn't write it, how can they explain to you what the writer wrote? They, they, they can't explain to you what the writer was thinking or what God was saying. Watch this, because God was saying it to them. Well, what do you think Pastor meant when he said, well, the best thing for us to do is probably go, go, go. So, so what needs to happen is nothing needs to be left to interpretation. Because when, when, when something is left to interpretation, what ends up happening is we're not speaking clearly to what's already written. If we speak clearly what's already written, we'll understand how we plug into what's already there. If you read it properly. So, so if you read it, the third group of folks, and I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I really think I'm about to let you go. I think this is going to work out pretty good. You got the writer of the vision. <laughs> you got the readers, the readers of the vision. He said, but they that, but the one because everybody's not going to read it. Y'all know some stuff they always say, if you want somebody that don't, don't want somebody to know something, put it in a book. Because I'm going to tell you, it's, I, sometimes it blows my mind when people say, well, I, I, did, I, I, I really didn't know that. I'm like, I'm about to, I, I told y'all, man, I'm about to stop texting folks. Because of my... The reason I am, Sister Michelle, because when folks come to me and ask me, well, Pastor, what time does that? Wait a minute. <laughs> you want to know what time something starts, scroll back up and check and read it because it's plain that we start at Seven o'clock. So you got a, you, <laughs> you got the, you got the, you got the writer of the vision. You got the the one who reads the vision, and then you got the runners, the runners with the vision. There, there are two type of people. Truth of the matter is, there, there are two type of people. There are runners, and then there are ruiners. There are writer, there, there are runners, and then there are people that are just flat out ruiners. Let me explain to you a little bit who the ruiners are. Can I? Y'all, y'all ain't gonna be mad at me, are you? Okay. The ruiners, they know what they have read. They have a clear understanding of what they have read, but they choose to share something other than what the vision says. Those are the ruiners of the vision. They they know exactly what it says. They they read it. They know it frontwards and backwards. They know it all the way through, but they choose to go out and say something other than what the vision says. Ruiners use what I call divisive language or divisive terms to, to cause division of the vision. They, here, here are the terms they use when, what, what, this is what they doing. Well, yeah, that, that's, what, that's, what, that's what they doing. Wait a minute, aren't you a member over there? Aren't you a leader? 
but it's they. Ruiners use words like, well, they said this, rather than this is what we're doing. They, they focus on what, what the terms that can, that can cause division within division. Ruiners, ruiners are not team players. They have a, they have a me first mentality. Lord Jesus. Ruiners are people that if it don't seem like it's going to work well for them, then they'll just, they'll just soon not doing it. Can I tell y'all who else ruiners are? Ruiners are people that know folks are saying other than what should be said and don't say nothing to stop what some... Well, I'm just going to stay to myself. So, so you, you, you fall over into that category with the ruiners because as opposed to saying what you know is right, you will let wrong seem right and you won't correct it. See, you got it. If you value, see, see you, you, you can tell what folks value. You really can tell what people value. Talk about somebody's favorite team long enough. They'll, they'll tell you last year's record, the number of first downs, who started that quarterback 10 years ago that don't know you, don't care nothing about you, and if they saw you on the street, probably wouldn't speak and wouldn't even take a selfie with you. But rather than, rather than correcting people that are wrong, the ruiners, those that know what to do and know what's right to do, will just go on with those who are doing wrong. They're, they're, they're ruiners, and they're, they're runners. The, the runners, on the other hand, see, the, the runners, the runners, they, the runners, man, they focus on sharing the vision. Notice what the text says. The text says, li listen to what it says, then the Lord answered me and said, record the vision, inscribe it on tablets, that the one who reads it may run. When I looked at, when I looked at what that means is, the, the one that reads it, he'll take the correct information and share it with other people. When you translate that out, they'll take what's correct and take it to others so others can take it to somebody else. Do you not know that people can't connect to what you're not happy with? I was telling, I, I was, I was telling, I was telling one, of, one of the brothers this morning, if Disney World don't do another commercial, if they don't invite you to Disney World no more, guess what? It's still going to be packed every season. Walmart can have you walking around the store looking for what you're looking for. You can't find it. You can't find nobody to help you find it. Nobody, they don't have nobody at Home Depot don't either. They don't have nobody to help you. You walk around Walmart for two hours looking for one item and it's tucked somewhere on a back shelf, but you will go all around, and then the moment you get home, somebody, you could have went to the dollar store, you'll tell them I went to Walmart. They don't have to do another commercial. They can, they can give you terrible service, but you will still go back. I told y'all we got to become the Chick-fil-A church. Yep. But folks at Chick-fil-A said, my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I'm thinking, it's somebody at work here got to be mad about something. <laughs> somebody check got shorted. At some point, somebody got to be mad. But what we do on the other hand, in the body of Christ, the moment we mad, we tell five people, five tell five more, five tell five more, but when something good happens, we're not quick to tell that as fast as we are what is bad. 
See, we got to learn as runners, you got to learn to carry correct information just as fast as you carry bad information. If we do that, watch this, we'll see the vision come to pass the way God plans for it to come to pass because it's for an appointed time. I said, okay, God, so, so, so God, tell me about this appointed time. So as I began to study, uh, there are two types of time. There is a chrono time, which is what we call a chronological time or a sequential order of time. And then there is a time called kairos time. Kairos is that God kind of time that when God brings it to pass, it's that what we call that due time or the proper time. So, so when God has a plan for it to come to pass, Y'all ever watch something on TV and it's something somebody said, boy, it was that defining moment. Kairos is that defining moment of time when God brings something to pass at the time that he wants it to come to pass. He said, it hastens. I heard somebody say, well, Pastor, if it hastens, why are we still waiting on it? Because a thousand days thousand days to God. To you is but one to God. He can bring it to pass whenever he's ready to bring it to pass because it has an appointed time. It is called a God kind of time. And most of us, watch this, we can't wait on the vision to come to pass because we'll go down the street somewhere else because that's already came to pass and you will miss what God doing, what you pour time into because we don't want to wait on God to do nothing. Bible says in Isaiah 40, 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But what we give up on is we don't believe that God will strengthen us while we're waiting. We don't want to wait for the vision. We just want something microwave. We want something quick. We want it right now, today. And guess what? It don't even have the same value if we had it today as if we had to wait for it and be strengthened for it. Do you not know that anything that's, anything that's valuable is worth waiting for? Anything of any kind of value is, not, is worth waiting for. But you know what ends up happening? We'll want what other people have, but not put, willing to put in the work that other people put in. Yeah. Oh, they have a wonderful, oh, their choir is wonderful. But we can't even get you to come to choir rehearsal. Oh, their Bible study was packed. How you know? You should have been at yours. The word over there is so powerful. Really? Is it? Really? I mean, it just moves me. Well, if you came here more than two Sundays a month, it might move you. You might have caught me on a down Sunday. Because you do know I miss it. Yeah, you might have caught me on a down Sunday. You went over there, he might have studied two weeks. He might have been off for two weeks and you showed up on a Sunday where he had taken two weeks off and he was fresh as can be. Downloaded ten sermons and copied and pasted two. So I'm wrong. But we got to learn to wait for it. We've got to learn to put in the work to get out of what we want from God. It's for an appointed time. Watch this. Though it tarries, guess what? He makes a promise about the vision. He said it will certainly come. It's not if it's going to come. It's certainly going to come. But what we'll do is the moment we look around and see somebody that's usually here, that's not here, something's wrong. They're just on vacation. That's all. They, they, they just went on vacation. But guess what? It will come to pass. We've just got to trust God that if we're a runner, we've got to run and not get distracted along the way. 
Do you know most times we don't say what God is saying because we get distracted along the way? And we began to listen at the naysayers. And when we began to listen at the naysayers, we can't run at the rate of speed we're supposed to be running because we're stopping to listen to everybody along the way. And when we're stopping to listen to everybody along the way, we're reducing the amount of time it was supposed to take for us to get where we're going. But listen, you got to value. If you, listen, if you're going to be a part of something, you got to value this thing. Does that make sense? You got to value what God says. Watch this. And then you got to value what the visionary is saying. Go talk to people who are a part of something. We'll go to a company. Go talk to some, some people who works for an organization. And the organization is blossoming and blooming. They can tell you the mission. They can tell you the vision. They can tell you all about it because they value it. You get what I'm saying? They value that. So what we've got to learn to do, y'all, value the vision that God has given. When we understand that, watch this, we, got, we, 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 we had to postpone. I'm just talking to y'all now. We had to postpone, uh, we had to postpone some enrichment. Not many kids we got around here. Really? Not many kids we got around here. We should have had some enrichment. We should have had some enrichment. But we're going to go somewhere else and enroll our kids somewhere else, and it's going to be wonderful. But guess what? How many, how many? We got PhDs here. We got EEDs. We got all kind of folks with all kind of degrees. But guess what? It should have happened right here. Some enrichment should have happened right here. You know why ACT prep goes? Because pe people value the education when they get to that level, but we got to value it on all levels. What do you want for your children? What do you want for your church? I tell people this all the time. Y'all can stand up. We're going home. We're going to do communion. We're going home. I tell people this all the time. What you want your church to be, that's what you be. If you want your church to be more loving, guess what? That's it. If you want your church to be more friendly, guess what? You be friendly. If you don't think the choir sounds good enough, join the choir. If the greeters ain't nice enough, start greeting. If the food don't taste well enough, start cooking. If the building ain't clean enough, start cleaning. Am I wrong? If Carice can't play, go take lessons and then see if you can let, ask Carice to give you some lessons so when he's not here, you can plug in and play. Am I making sense? Yeah. If you tired of seeing that piece of paper every time you leave the church, stop and pick it up. I'm okay? Okay. Listen, you're here today. You're ready to put more value on what you're doing yourself. I'm ready to put more value. Watch this. Because in your home, guess what you got to have? You got to have a vision for your home. You got to have a vision for your business. Because it ain't going to just happen. You got to have a vision for it. You got to have a, you got to have a mission for it. If you're struggling with that, if you, listen, you just need somebody to touch and agree with you. Come on up here, uh, Cornelius. Come on up here. Then you're in that backslidden place. You're not, you're not saved. You, 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 you want to get right with God and you want to accept God as your Lord and Savior. Why don't you come on down today? This is your moment. This is your time. Why don't you come on down today? The person sitting next to you, they're, they're far worse off than you are. Trust me. They just look like they're not. Okay? So if you want to accept, if you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you want to get back on that right track with God, why don't you come on down today? And then there's a third group of you in here. You're here visiting today. You want to make Hope Everlasting Ministry your church home? Why don't you come on down? We'll be glad to have you. We'll love on you. And I'd love to be your pastor. Amen? Yeah. That businessman. Some stuff tearing you because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I just want to touch you. 
Father God, we come before you now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you today for Brother Cornelius. Lord, we, I pray now in Jesus' name that the, the business that you place on the inside of him, the catering service, Lord, big, big C's catering, God, I pray now in Jesus' name that, that it will not only have success, but it will have great success. I touch and agree with him today, God, that you're bringing his business to pass like never before, God. I ask you now in Jesus' name to do it on his behalf today, God. We stand in agreement for success and great success. In Jesus' name we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. start uh, getting ready for communion. Let me just say it's always a pleasure to come before you and share God's word. As we get together for communion, this is a special time so uh, we, we can limit the walking during this time. We want to just, just be able to have this communion with God where we believe that he's coming back to receive us to himself. Amen. Amen.
you, thanking you for this time that we have, God, this time of communion, God. We thank you right now for the blood and the body of Jesus Christ, God, the, the body that was broken for us, God, and the blood that was shed for us, God. We come at a time and a moment of celebration today, God, expecting and believing that one day you're going to come back to receive us to yourself. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Jesus the Christ, the blood and the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The blood and the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The blood and the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The blood and the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The blood and the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The blood and the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Blood and 
the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. this time to this opportunity to come for communion this is a time that is so very sacred that night when Jesus had his disciples in that upper room that was a time that he was ministering to them about his crucifixion about the suffering that was about to take place just for them that night when he had them in that upper room he gave them that bread he broke it he said, take thee and eat all of this because this represents my body that was broken for you. In the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents my blood that is shed for you. Take thee and drink all of it. The Bible teaches us that as often as we do this, we do show the Lord's death until he comes. Communion is an outward testimony that says that we believe that one day, the Lord is coming back to receive us to himself. Amen? So this is a time of celebration. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you now in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for this time we've had today. We thank you for this time of communion, God. We thank you for your word that have gone forth today, God. We pray now in Jesus' name that you cover your people, Lord, that you guard our hearts and our minds in you and all that you've given us to do, Lord. Bless this day. For this is the day that you've given us, Lord, and we're rejoicing, Lord, and just be, being glad in all that you're doing. God, we thank you for the blood that was shed for our lives at Calvary. God, we thank you for your body that was broken for us, God, and we honor you now. Lord, as we ask, leave this place, God, but never ever from your presence, we ask that you cover us and keep us. Watch over us, Lord, and bless our, our members who are not with us today. Cover them in their lives as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Team leaders, please don't leave. Team leaders, I need to have you over here to the left by the drums. Team leaders, I need you over to the left by the drums, starting on that front row. Team leaders, team leaders, team leaders, team leaders, 